Painter offers a variety of options for converting photos to paintings. The first step is to open up the photo art layout and that's going to give you the tools that you need to do all of this photo painting. One of the tools, the photo art, will show up on the property bar and it's a quick reference panel. And then you have the photo art full panel, which we'll be using throughout the demonstration here today. And each one of these sections can, if you double click, you can collapse the tabs. So I'll talk you through everything as we're creating our photo art. So to begin with, we want to choose an AI style and I'm going to choose charcoal and we'll go ahead and let this run on our image here. And I intentionally selected a very simple still life. That's a great place to start if you're new to photo art. This little slider down here is color match. I actually want the colors from the lemon and I can also adjust and add some smoothing to the image. Now, if I prefer to not have the background included, I could also get rid of that. So we'll reset the image and I'm gonna use the magic wand in its default settings to select the background and then I'll invert the selection to grab the lemon and we'll run the filter again. And this way I won't have the painted portion in the background. It will only paint the lemon. So this is the first and easiest option for converting photos to artwork, and that's using the AI styles. I'm gonna reset the image and we'll turn the selection off and we'll try out another option, going to the underpainting tab here. This is where I can prep my photo. You can do things like apply color schemes, things like the saturation, brightness, contrast. This image already has some really nice contrast and saturation. Next, we could also apply an edge effect, and these are more for if you have an image that extends all the way to the edge of the canvas and you want to kind of fade out the edges. You could choose different effects there. Now, once we have it prepped, we're going to apply it to a new clone document and we have some choices. I can clear the canvas of the photo, toggle the tracing paper. Those are options by default and I'm going to go ahead and run with those. They worked perfect for me. So let's go ahead and apply this to the document and then we'll move on to painting. All right, so with that applied now, the canvas looks a little bit different. You can see that everything is faded back and this is because we have a piece of tracing paper that is allowing us to reference the image. I can toggle that tracing paper on and off. I can adjust opacity. Keyboard commands are Command or Control T and it's easier than going to the panel. So we can paint directly from this photo using the colors if we want to. We're still gonna do a little bit of cheating. So let's go to the auto painting panel. And from here, I'm going to turn on smart stroke painting. And just as the name implies, it's going to be intelligent. And with the click of a button, we can actually auto paint this image. So if we take a look in the brush selector, it brings us into the smart strokes brush category. I can choose from a variety of media types, entirely up to you, and really based on your image, what you would like your end result to be. I think that this one would look nice as a pastel. So let's select that. And the final step is to toggle that tracing paper off. So remember that command, command or control T, and now we can click the play button and away painter is going to go. So you can see that it's starting to build the paint strokes up on the canvas. It starts with big bold strokes and then it begins to minimize and add more detail. And once this is done, you might be happy with just the auto generated end result. And here we have it. Now you can also do some touching up if you would like to. Um, I can use the pastel brush and I can start to brush away some of the 
extra remnants that showed up outside of the lemon. We can also use another option, which is restoration. Um, so you can see with the color wheel here that it's grayed out. That means that you are painting with the colors from the photo. That's your key indication that you're cloning, no matter what brush you have. By default, the smart strokes and the cloning brushes will turn on that clone color for you. So let's go to restoration. And this will allow me to select a nice soft edge cloner brush. And this is going to bring back in the photo. And because I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro drawing tablet, I can adjust the amount of pressure or the amount of the photo that comes back based on the pressure that I place using that stylus on the tablet. Maybe I wanna bring in some of the stem. And you can see here, if I really press hard, I'm gonna bring in 100% of the photo. If I press lightly, then it will more subtly bring in the image. So let's undo. Maybe I'll come down here and add a little of the dimpling that we saw in the original image. So you can really choose what you would like to bring back and mix and match the photo with the auto painting. So that is the auto painting and restoration process. If we want to see the before and after results, we can toggle that tracing paper and get that preview. And from here, we'll move on to the next type of painting. I'm going to go ahead and clear the canvas. And at this point in time, we're going to show you how to do some hand painting. We can still use the photo as reference, so I'm going to leave that tracing paper turned on. And to do this, we're going to use the cloner brushes. And we have them grouped in four different categories. There's general, messy, tinting, touch-up. But let's go ahead and use the spray, the touch-up spray. And this is an easy one. We're just going to kind of spray Spray out on the canvas here. It's pulling the colors from the photo in sort of an airbrushy type of way. And instead of painting something full for you guys right now, I'm just going to experiment with a couple different brushes. And this is what I would like you to do as well. Play around with the different brushes and determine which ones you like best. You might switch your media types based on the subject matter that you have as well. But it's a lot of fun just to try the different brushes and find out your favorites. So now we've got a nice clumpy tapered. You can toggle that tracing paper on and off. So if I wanted to come up and start to paint the top of the leaf, I need to be able to see a little bit of it so that I can stay within the lines. And um, that actually looks really nice. Let's go ahead and try a different type of brush. If we go to messy, these sound like they're a lot of fun. Go ahead and use this is a very clumpy kind of furry spray that doesn't really suit a lemon so well. But as you can see, I'm just playing around here. So try all four categories of cloners and you can actually go in and favorite the ones that you like the best. So when you come back, you can paint with those. Here's a really nice chalk that picks up on the canvas texture that you have selected. And once again, using a drawing tablet that really gives you the freedom to express the pressure sensitivity. And I highly encourage everybody to be using a drawing tablet when they're painting in painter. So right now I'm just, I just brought back softly some of the image. We can also do some tinting. So this will allow you to mix a little bit of color. You can see I have some blue in the color wheel there. So it's mixing that into the green in the leaf. That's our overview of the cloning tools in painter 2022. Happy painting.